Hey there, this is Andrea with my week four interactive advanced concept. Um, I'm going to be making elephant toothpaste. So hopefully what's going to happen if I do um, the presentation correctly is that it will create foam. And it's just going to be using um, hydrogen peroxide um, and then a little bit of um, food coloring and dish soap and I'm going to add uh, yeast to that because yeast contains catalase and catalase is an enzyme. So the enzyme is not going to be a part of the chemical reaction, it's just going to speed it up because normally hydrogen um, would decompose on its own at a very, very slow rate um, into um, oxygen and water but the uh, enzyme is going to speed it up. So the soap is not going to be part of the chemical equation either. It's just going to change. It's going to, it's going to change its physical state rather than its chemical state. Um, so the rate of the reaction is going to be increased by the enzyme and that can happen from a bunch of some substances, but right now I'm going to use yeast. Um, so when the oxygen is generated, when it gets decomposed from um, the peroxide, it's going to create gas bubbles. And we're going to be able to see those gas bubbles, especially um, because of the soap that's going to be used that creates gas bubbles really easily. It's going to trap the oxygen gas into the soap. And that's what's going to be the foam. Um, so. When we add these to hydrogen peroxide, that's going to increase it very quickly. And um, we'll see that the foam is actually going to be warm because of the chemical reaction that's happening. So the um, entropy of the chemical equation will be positive um, because heat is going to be produced. Hopefully we do it right. And um, it is going to be a chemical reaction. And then... Um, and that's going to be because of all the gas that's produced as well. So there's going to be a spreading and um, the order is going to be increased. So um, the entropy will be positive and the enthalpy will be a negative value. And the Gibbs free energy will also be negative and show that the reaction is not spontaneous because um, we're using the catalyst to cause a reaction. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. Um, be right there in my shower. Um, there it is. Oh, one second. Okay, I'm back. Um, so what I'm going to do is add the peroxide first. And the reason why I was saying before is that I wasn't sure if this was going to react was because I only have 3% um, peroxide. So I'm going to add a little bit more because the original experiment said to add 10% um, solution, but I kind of thought Walmart was going to have a higher solution than 3% and it didn't. So um, now the hair salon is closed and I can't get that by the time I decided to do this. Okay, so here's just a little bit of dish soap, a couple of drops get the um, bubbles shown and then I'm going to add a little bit of uh, food coloring. And next I'm going to add about a tablespoon of yeast to about a half a cup of warm water um, to get it activated. Oh, it's really warm. And now I'm going to add it to um, the solution over here and hopefully it's going to create the element. Okay, um, 
that created it, but not very impressively. And obviously, I think that that's just because the peroxide pollution wasn't concentrated enough because it is foamy and it's very warm, actually. This bottle is very, very warm. Um, you can kind of see the foam, kind of. Um, this bottle is super warm. I think it's melting the bottle, actually. I'm going to put it down the drain. Um, but yeah, like I said, I think that it just didn't work the way it was supposed to because the hydrogen peroxide concentration wasn't, um, the correct amount was only 3%, and who even knows that I might have even had it watered down since it was in my, um, not watered down, but it may have already been a little bit decomposed because it's been in a cabinet for a long time. So, all right, thanks.